attention to me. Come here, baby. Come on. Today is open day at youth uh, at Kapar WMA and I have Braden Palmer and my son Gunner Palmer and uh, kind of drizzly rainy this morning and humidity is pretty high but we're going to give it a try. We've had a pretty good hatch out here the last couple of years so it's going to be pretty interesting this year. Last couple of days some folks have been listening they've been gobbling once or twice on roofs and shutting up. Oh really? Yeah. Today is March the 8th. going towards the boundary line. We had a gobbler come in quiet this morning. We were set up on, sound like, what y'all think, three or four different gobbler, gobbling in a group. Heard some hens in the distance coming. The gobblers would come and go, come and go. Then all of a sudden, a, a gobbler had come in silent and come out, this come out on the edge of this road down here, 45, 50 yards. Gunner, I mean, Braden was able to turn around and get on him, but just borderline shot, and it ain't worth taking a chance of crippling one. So uh, we finna go to another spot. To, Folks has heard some birds this morning there, and uh, they let us know about them, so we're gonna go try to get on them. This is Houston Granger, my uncle. Mm -hmm. This is Jimmy Wooten. This is Gannon Whittington. Uh, we got on some birds opening day of you season. We're here on Capire Management Area in Capire County. Opening day, we got on some birds off Airport Road, crossing the dove field where we normally have a dove field. We're going back in there this morning, try to get on and try to get Gannon the bird. Yesterday was his birthday, so we're going to try to extend his birthday and give him a birthday present this morning. <laughs> Houston's going to be calling, and I'm going to be sitting with Gannon. Miss Jimmy's going to be some extra ears, but we need them. <laughs> Birds ahead of the road. Very good. That's good because we don't want to be as good as birds. 
Good job. Yes. Happy late birthday. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. Today is Tuesday, the youth week. We're at uh, Kapai WMA in Kapai County. And uh, we was able to bring Gannon. Yesterday was his birthday, so happy late birthday. Thank but uh, you. we come in here this morning. I got my uncle to come where I could sit with Gannon and kind of help him. And uh, what, this is your second turkey? Yes, sir. But he's a good bird. He's probably a three-year-old looking at his fur. Uh, beard, kind of a thin, thin beard, which is unusual for out here. Normally, turkeys out here got pretty heavy beard, but you don't ever know. You doing your job? Yes, sir. Good job. How do you like turkey hunting? It's fun. What do you like best about it? Gobble. Same thing everybody likes. The gobble. You don't even have to kill one to have a good hunt turkey hunt. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features such as wildlife photography, some lunar tables, and even a kids page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management area. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. Your favorite ones now. <laughs> Beautiful, man. And there's that creek challenge. I might not can catch him, but I call it. <laughs> See what I mean? He's gonna do he's gonna do that. He ain't gonna catch that fish. We're down here in Franklin County at Lake Okissa, number one rated bass lake in the state. We've got the number one fisherman in the boat with us. Two combinations, for sure we're gonna catch some fish. Well, Dusty, the first time we came to this lake, we were actually deer hunting. That's right. We are actually, we used to bow hunt these back edges of these the, uh, creek channels. And yep. uh, they told us they were gonna put a lake in out here. And we were like, man, we're gonna lose our bow hunting spot. But guess what? We gained the bass fish in heaven. <laughs> tell you, it's a destiny, what do we got about? 11, how many acres is this lake? 1,175 acres. 1,175 acres. Yeah, and they did it right. They uh, they really put a lot of time in this thing. It's a Bill Dance Signature Series lake. And there's perch beds all over this place, bass beds. I mean, they really did it right. Uh, well, also, what's helping is we have a slot limit on this lake, right? 18 to 22 on your bass. And, we'll catch and there's them. a bunch of them in here. Now, we're what, six years old on the lake now? It opened in 07, but it had water in it a few years before that. Now, what, what is our uh, 
What is our, what's the largest fish we've pulled out of here so far? They 11-6. 11-6. That's not bad. Out of 10-4 caught last week, and I've heard of several eights and nines, so it's on. Now, Justin, tell me, how many boats a day we're getting in here now? Well, last year, I hadn't got a report on that yet, but last year in the prime time, there was about 800 a, a week. That is some fishing pressure, you hear me? Oop. There he is. There he is. First fish of the day. Spinner bait. Look, oh, and lost him. Ah, he's a little chewy anyway. <laughs> the old spinner bait. Oh, that's a good fish, too. Oh, no. He's in the stump. Here he comes. He's coming out. Oh, yeah. There he is. He's balling right there. There he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good fish, Destry. Take your time. Lip, lip him, lip him. Oh, yeah. Come here, baby. Come on. There he is. Already laid out. You think? Yeah, look at the belly. Skinny as a rail. Pretty. Grow up, I'll get you next year. Fish on. Oh, yeah. There he is. That's what I'm talking about. When all else fails. See, they off them banks right now. Whack them shaky head, baby. Not very much, but. Pretty little fish. What you got there, Dusty? I got a little buck bass. Look at that. Sure would like to find them big females. Boy, that's a pretty fish, though, ain't it? That was on shaky head? Yes, sir. Shaky head. <laughs> These little males, we got to find the females, man. Be still there. Mm. Now we playing. Get him, son. Uh, oh, he's hung up in the oh, trees. No, he's hung up. Hold on, let me see if I can get you over there. Hung up in the lumber, son. Hung up in lumber. Still on, still on, fish still on. Finally got him out of there. Got a good barb on that hook. I've been trying for 10 minutes for that fish. <laughs> I can't believe he went in that lumber and we got him to come back out. Now we're catching the males. Where's the females? They're close. Oh boy. There's a female. Where's that little camera at? You got a hook good? Yeah. What you got there, Dustin? I'd say about a three and a three and a half, three and a quarter pounds, something like that. Perfect slot fish for Lake Okissa. Yeah, that fish is probably about 18 and a half inches. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Seen her on the bed through there the first time with crawfish, she sucked it up. That's how it's supposed to go right there. Oh, I got a bite, son. There he is. Nice one, boy. Oh, yeah. Good looking. Mm, look at that. Boy, that's shaky what head. About. Doing what I mentioned? Post spawn deeper? Well, let's see. I just heard one hit somewhere. This is a little male fish. You know, these fish are bed in eight foot of water too, as clear as this lake is. There, there he is. is. Oh yeah. Get him, son. I try to tell you. Try to tell you. We own them now. <laughs> them little suckers fight, don't they? Well, I'm telling you here, look at your hand, watch your hand. Good fish, little stout little fish. I tell you, jump. All right, 
Ooh, good one too, huh? Nice fish. Nice fish. Yes, sir. Back off of it, back off of it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, baby. Good fish. That's the best fish of the day. Yep. Oh my goodness, that sucker's fighting, boy. Ooh, in my spot. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fish. Golly, beautiful, man. I told you them females was out here. Jesse, what do you say, man? That's a lot after a long, hard day of fishing. I'm ready to grab a po' boy. Had a good start with death. I'm telling you, I'm hungry too, man. We've caught some nice, pretty fish today. Bite was off, it wasn't quite on what we thought. But uh, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Know that money spent on a Mississippi hunting and fishing license is just like an investment. The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing, like providing public hunting opportunities on wildlife management areas, advising private landowners on deer and habitat management, providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes, and operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. Our bear population is growing in Mississippi. Uh, we're seeing bears expanding into areas of the state that we haven't had bears before, uh, including central and, and uh, eastern really? Mississippi. Uh, these are places we'd never had sightings before, and now sightings have, have almost become uh, common in some counties of Mississippi. So it's a, it's a positive trend that we expect to continue uh, over time. We do den checks during the spring of the year, uh, typically early March, uh, where we go in and check on our radio collared females to see if they have newborn cubs. Uh, we weigh and mark those cubs. It gives us an idea of population growth, of recruitment levels. It uh, gives us an idea of where our bear population is heading here in the state. This past den season, we did a special project where we installed uh, hidden cameras inside the, inside the dens of some of our radio collared females. Uh, these, hit, these hidden cameras gave us some new insight into what goes on inside of a bear's den in Mississippi. You know, these are, this is footage that we would have never been able to see otherwise uh, because after we do our work up, we leave the bears to, to themselves and go on our way. But these cameras gave us some, some great footage and showed us some things that we, we had never seen before. Some of the more interesting things, you know, we saw a video clip of, of a mother actually leaving the den, uh, kind of walking out into the sun to sort of stretch her legs, so to speak. Uh, the cubs were, were napping soundly there in the den. She walked out for a little bit and then came back, back inside to, to check on them again and to curl back up. Uh, we also had some great clips of some cubs, you know, uh, trying to sort of escape, you know, wandering around in the den and she would corral them back into the nest and, uh, and things like that. We saw some some great footage watching the cubs, you know, wrestle and play with each other like siblings would, any sibling would do. Uh, it was really just some interesting stuff that we would have never been able to see otherwise. We also had some video of uh, what must have been one of the bravest rats that I've ever seen. A uh, wood rat, uh, while she was sleeping one night, kind of snuck up behind her and was, was foraging around in her den. Uh, you know, you'd have to think that this 200 pound bear and that, that small rat wouldn't have been much of a challenge, but uh, just goes to show you how, you know, in the woods, creatures interact with each other, uh, despite the size of one or the other. Today we are on Donaldson Point Hunting Club uh, inside the levee in Bolivar County. Uh, three of our radio collared females uh, live on this club. And uh, we've come in, uh, we came in a couple of weeks ago, tracked them down, 
Uh, we know for sure that two of them have newborn cubs and we strongly suspect that the third one does as well. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to sneak out there and uh, we're going to tranquilize the female. Uh, we're going to change her collar out and then uh, take the cubs, weigh, measure them, uh, implant them with a special little microchip that allows us to, to find them later on and we'll know which cub it was and where it came from and uh, then just put them back in their den and head on our way. We know that we lost a lot last year. We lost a lot of cubs last year because of the flood, uh, especially inside the levee here where we are today. We know that we lost every cub that we had uh, the year before because of the high water, which is, you know, it's sad, but it's just a part of it. You know, uh, it's good to see that they rebounded, though, and had, had litters the following year. And so, uh, so you know, that's a, that's a positive sign of, of growth for the population, especially here. We're, uh, we're now to the second location. We're about to go in and work up the second bear today. Uh, we've got another female that's denned up out here. Uh, these pretty big woods right here. Uh, we, we heard uh, one cub the last time that we came and checked on her. And so uh, we need to get in there and change out her collar, uh, tag the cubs just like we did on the other one. And uh, then we'll head on out after that. You got the data sheet? Okay. Today we're on day two of our uh, Donaldson Point den checks here in Bolivar County. Uh, we worked uh, two female bears yesterday. Uh, everything went great. Uh, we had one litter of four cubs, which was which was almost unprecedented uh, to have that many cubs. Uh, the other litter had a, a big, fat, healthy boy. And uh, we're going to check our last collared female on the club today. She's actually in a cavity up in a tree, so we wanted to save her for last because we knew it would take a little more time to, to get to her. Uh, we're going to climb up in the tree, uh, we're going to tranquilize her, uh, change out her collar. Uh, we expect that she's going to have cubs, we're not positive, but uh, if she does have cubs, we're going to send them back down to the ground and uh, weigh them, measure them, uh, go through the whole, whole workup and put the cubs back in the tree when we're ready to go and head on out. And that'll be that. We suspect that uh, last year might have been her first litter of cubs and, you know, before they really get the hang of it, so to speak, you know, sometimes they can be a little jumpy and a little, a little testy about being, being harassed, you know, us trying to sneak up on them with the dart pistol and all that sort of thing. And uh, she didn't, she didn't handle it too well last year. Uh, she was one of the, one out of probably a hundred that, that actually jumped up and took off running, you know, just kind of, kind of scared her pretty bad. But, uh, you know, in the end, you know, all's well that ends well. And uh, she's, she's back on the air now, so we're going to go, we're going to go check on her and see, see what she produced this year. She knows that we're here. She knows she can hear Nick moving. She can probably smell us out there. But her first reaction is to protect those cubs. So what she's going to do is kind of hunch over and cover up those cubs. And that's why she keeps her face down like that. You know, people always think that this would be such a dangerous thing. You know, with a mother bear with her cubs up in the tree, but, you know, they're actually very timid that way. You know, her first priority is just to shelter up for those cubs, even with somebody climbing up in a tree right next to her. One of the things was is that, you know, she, we, we never heard a cub up there, you know, and when these females have cubs in the den with them, they're far less likely to try to bolt and run or try to come out of the tree, that sort of thing. You know, he, Nick was up there for a long time and never heard a cub squeal or anything like that. So it, it makes you a little wary of the fact that, you know, there's the chance that she might try to abandon the den and come out. And, you know, that puts, that puts the bear at a lot of risk, you know, especially in an elevated tree like that. So we just decided it'd be better if we just left her alone. Our hope is that in the future uh, we refine our techniques and we have these cameras set up that they'll last for, for several weeks uh, so that we can actually log on to a computer, the public can log on to a website, and we can actually watch these bears in their den during real-time situations. Uh, it'll provide some, some really great footage and also some, some, a great learning opportunity for people throughout Mississippi. Future looks good. Future looks very good. Very promising. Just ask these little guys. 